Bernie Sanders gets China wrong. G7 defends Hong Kong. And chaos reigns at China's first Costco. That and more on this week's China Uncensored. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China news headlines. Presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders was one of the first U.S. senators to come out hard against China. Here he is in 1994, arguing against granting China most favored nation trade status. Mr. Speaker, when multinational corporations throw American workers out on the street and move to China where workers are paid 15 cents an hour, where slave labor exists, where basic democratic rights are ignored, where workers cannot organize free trade unions. That scenario may be good for the profit margins of the large corporations, but it is a disaster for American workers. It is absurd to be talking about most favored nation status for a country which allows for the ruthless exploitation of its workers. Wow. If Twitter had existed in 1994, Donald Trump would have tweeted pretty much the same thing. So. What does Sanders think now? I think China uh, is a country that is moving, unfortunately, in a more authoritarian way in a number of directions. Well, they've been authoritarian since the beginning, but carry on. But what we have to say about China, in fairness to China and its leadership, is if I'm not mistaken, they have made more progress in addressing extreme poverty than any country in the history of civilization. Okay, so they've done a lot of things for their people. Oh, Bernie. Yes, they've done a lot of things for their people, like the slave labor and ruthless exploitation of workers you mentioned back in 1994. Unfortunately, it seems Sanders may have fallen victim to a common piece of Communist Party propaganda. China has lifted more than 700 million people out of poverty. Yes, the Chinese Communist Party is like a giant arcade claw machine, gently lifting millions of Chinese people out of poverty. The thing is, if you're lifting something out of Chinese state-run media, you probably can guess it's not really true. I gave a full rundown of why this isn't true in the episode China's Poverty Lie. But to be brief, the Chinese Communist Party destroyed the entire Chinese economy in the 1950s in their attempt to enforce collective farming and steel production. When that failed miserably and ended in the deaths of millions, they launched the Cultural Revolution. That also failed miserably and ended in the deaths of millions. Then, after Chairman Mao died, the new leader, Deng Xiaoping, decided to scale back some of those failed collectivization policies. He gradually allowed people to buy and sell and do business again. Given this little bit of market-based economic wiggle room, Chinese people lifted themselves out of poverty. They got an even bigger boost when jobs started coming in from all those multinational corporations Sanders talked about in 1994. But even despite allowing private enterprise, 900 million people in China still make less than $10 a day. But Chinese authorities categorize most of them now as low income. So technically, they're not in poverty. Oh, and note that every time China releases their annual white paper on human rights, it focuses on how many people it's lifted out of poverty, claiming that's the most important human right. Which is to say, as long as people seem less poor than they were 40 years ago, human rights in China are improving. Look, economically, Chinese people are doing better than they were when Mao died. And that's a good thing. But the propaganda is when the Chinese Communist Party takes all the credit for lifting people up, and then also tries to use it to cover up their human rights crimes. Like Xinjiang's re-education camps. Those people aren't being tortured, they're being lifted out of poverty. Hopefully Sanders' economic plan doesn't take inspiration from China's poverty elimination. The Pentagon is accusing China of bullying tactics against Vietnam. Yes, the Pentagon is standing up for Vietnam, the communist regime they tried so hard to defeat half a century ago. But now, of course, there's a scarier communist regime. A Chinese survey vessel entered Vietnam's exclusive economic zone on Saturday. It claimed to be doing a seismic survey. You know. For science. Nothing to do with all the oil that's there. The Pentagon statement said, China resumed its coercive interference in Vietnam's long-standing oil and gas activities in the South China Sea. And if anyone knows a thing or two about coercive interference for oil, it's the U.S. military. What you're looking at isn't footage from some upcoming sci-fi movie. 
This is an autonomous passenger drone made by the Chinese company Ehong. It could be the first company in the world to start regular flights on pilotless passenger drones. But do you really want your pilotless drone being built and controlled by a Chinese company which, by law, has ties to the Communist Party? I can just imagine some Falun Gong practitioner on his way to the grocery store, suddenly rerouted to a labor camp, where he'll be lifted out of poverty. So you see, these drones aren't from a sci-fi movie, they're from a real-life horror movie. I'd rather fly on this plane full of durians. But the Ehong drone nightmare may not be coming to the U.S. anytime soon. The Pentagon recently banned the use of drones built by China's DJI and may soon ban all Chinese-built drones and Chinese-manufactured components from military use. And if it ends up being anything like the Chinese telecom company Huawei, the military ban could someday become a consumer ban as well. The officially atheist Chinese Communist Party has just ordained its first Catholic bishop in China under a new deal with the Vatican. You might be asking yourself, wait, what? Well, the Chinese Communist Party has always insisted it had the right to appoint Catholic bishops in China. Look, it makes no sense, but that's just how the party operates. But over the past several years, the Vatican has been working on a pretty great deal that will benefit Catholics living in one of the most oppressive countries for Christians in the world. The Vatican will now allow the Communist Party to appoint bishops. In exchange, the Vatican gets to help make the Chinese Communist Party look good. This is what Beijing calls win-win mutual cooperation. If only the leaders of other countries were so good at making deals. As it is, during the recent G7 meeting, Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the United States all issued a joint statement telling China to cut out its oppression in Hong Kong. The statement said, the G7 reaffirms the existence and importance of the 1984 Sino-British Agreement on Hong Kong and calls for avoiding violence. The Sino-British Agreement was a deal between China and the UK that the UK would give Hong Kong to China under the condition that Hong Kong could keep its freedoms for 50 years. China later said that has no meaning. I guess they had their fingers crossed behind their back when they made the deal. Unfortunately, international law permits that kind of thing. Good news for Australian author Yang Hung Jun. After being detained for seven months in China on undisclosed charges, he's finally learned why he's being detained. Turns out, it's on espionage charges. Wow, what a master spy. It took China seven months to figure out what they had arrested him for. Amazing. It has nothing to do with the fact the author is considered a dedicated democracy activist who believed that China's autocratic system would, with time, necessarily liberalize. Yang has been an Australian citizen since 2002, but still held a Chinese passport, which means in the eyes of the Chinese Communist Party, Yang belongs to China. Speaking of spycraft, according to the New York Times, China has been using LinkedIn to recruit spies. Great, like we needed more recruiters on LinkedIn. Can't wait to hear about another new and exciting opportunity. But wait, why is China using LinkedIn? Instead of dispatching spies to the U.S. to recruit a single target, it's more efficient to sit behind a computer in China and send out friend requests to thousands of targets using fake profiles. You know, now I'm second-guessing if I should have given all that top-secret info to my new LinkedIn friend, American Joe. He seems like he's on the level. Bad news for VPN users in China. A 26-year-old was just sentenced to seven years in prison for sharing VPN software. He had been sharing it on popular messaging sites in China. Police found those messages and then found him using his phone's geographical positioning. That's horrible, terrifying, and also, I want to know what VPN he was using because I don't think it works very well. This is just the latest in an ongoing crackdown on VPNs in China. I mean, what's the point of having a draconian internet censorship firewall if people can just jump over the wall? The Confucius Institute, a Chinese language program with schools and classes all over the world. Well, the education minister in New Brunswick, Canada, decided to end his school system's relationship with the Confucius Institute because of its ties to the Chinese government. Then he received a visit from a top Chinese diplomat. He told me about how the Confucius Institute had nothing at all to do with Chinese government then very strongly expressed concerns this might adversely impact trade relationships with China and the Chinese government. I don't know how Canadian officials saw through the Chinese diplomats' ploy. It was foolproof. Huh. 
Come to think of it, that's the same message my LinkedIn friend, American Joe, has been telling me. Costco opened its first store in China on Tuesday, and it was chaos. There was a three-hour wait just for parking. When the gates opened, people literally crawled their way in. It got so bad, local police had to be called in. They demanded people be rational. Rational. Rational in Costco? I don't think so. I need a king-size mattress and five gallons of Kirkland Signature Ranch dressing, and I need them now. Ultimately, the store was forced to close eight hours early. And as the Wall Street Journal points out, what trade war? And finally, according to a group of Chinese academics, the English language, and somehow by proxy all Western civilization, originated from China. The evidence? Yellow in English sounds a bit like yellow which is the word for falling leaves, but backwards. Shop sounds vaguely similar to shangdian. Heart and head begin with the letters H-E as a nod to he, meaning core in 20th century pinyin. Yes, China invented gunpowder, the compass, and all of Western civilization, but especially Shakespeare. Everything has been a part of China since ancient times. And that's it for this week's China News Headlines. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you. A fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Maldoon7 asks, Chris, do you think Trump's statement about ordering U.S. businesses to search for alternatives to China shows his political will, or was it more talk? An interesting question. Trump has actually been talking about how U.S. businesses ought to leave China since before he was president. In fact, he had a similar line about Japan back in the 80s. But even as president, he's not able to force U.S. businesses to come back to the United States. But it does seem like he can theoretically force them not to do business in China. Trump suggested he could invoke the Emergency Economic Powers Act of 1977. He could use that to block financial transactions between a U.S. company and China. So basically, those companies would need to go elsewhere. But will he actually invoke the Emergency Economic Powers Act? I don't know. But the message he's sending to U.S. companies is pretty clear. Thanks for your question. And if you have a question for me you want to hear answered on the show, sign up to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by supporting the show with a dollar or more per episode. Again, YouTube is demonetizing us so much, we would have to shut down the show if it weren't for your support. And to everyone, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.